your name? Nicholas. And what is your occupation? I'm a trainer. Personal trainer. Okay, and how long have you been a personal trainer? For 11 years. 11 years. And have you ever considered starting your own personal training business um, yeah. outside of a gym? Yeah. Okay. And do you know what a copyright is? No. Do you have any idea why a copyright or um, different intellectual property could be important to someone like you? Not, not the specific reason, no. I mean, I imagine that it would be important, but it's... No, well, you, you no it's not why. at the front of my brain. If I was going to start a company, I really wouldn't, you wouldn't think know. about copywriting right off the bat. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thanks. Right. Okay, hey guys and welcome back to my channel so I hope you enjoyed that little intro clip um, that was Nick and he kindly obliged me in proving a point and that point is simply that a lot of people in the fitness space don't know or understand the law and they don't know how to use it to their advantage so today for the fourth episode in my legal fitness series we are going to cover copyrights, which is exactly what I asked him about. Before I get started, let me go ahead and give you my disclaimer. This video is intended to only be information, not legal advice. I am an attorney. I am not your attorney, as I've said in the past. I'm licensed here in the state of Florida. And what I'm going to discuss today is going to be similar to last week as it is intellectual property, so it is federally regulated. There are state regulations for this type of thing as well but I'm going to focus on the federal regulations and how you can go about protecting yourself through that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just dive right in and go over a little bit what is a copyright and how you may have them in your business and then the steps that you need to take in order to register them and protect them. I'm going to look at my notes and a little bit over at my computer, so I'm sorry if I'm not looking directly at you, but I just wanna make sure that I get the information right and to you in a very succinct way. Hopefully this one will be shorter than the last you have been. A lot of people don't realize that they actually have tons and tons of copyrightable material or already copyrighted material that is currently protected by the common law. Copyrights protect what the law calls original works of authorship. So anything along the lines of music, photography, books, movies, even things like ebooks are going to be protected by copyright law. It also protects things like software and code, and if you are coming up with your app and you're doing the coding for yourself, a lot of those things are going to be protected. Anything that you create or that is creative in any sense, and honestly, the copyright laws are very lax when it comes to what's considered creative, is protected. So if you wrote that ebook on tracking macros or training splits, and you're selling it on your website, I hope that you have registered that and that it is currently being protected to the fullest extent. So copyright protects the way things are expressed, not necessarily the material that is behind it. And you just have to think of it like this. While yes, your ebook on tracking macros is protectable by copyright law, the information about macros isn't necessarily copyrightable. Somebody can write a book about tracking macros. It just can't be, you know, worded the same as yours. It can't look the same as yours, that kind of thing. Keep that in mind when trying to decide what copyrights you currently own. So as lawyers like to say, a copyright will give you a group or a bundle of rights. So because you're the owner of a copyright, you can do quite a few things with that and you can keep other people from doing quite a few things with that. So I'm just going to give you a list of basically what the federal law says as the owner of a copyright you can do. You get the right to use that work, obviously. You get to the right to distribute it however you want and to send it out however you want. You can display it, you can have it hanging in an art gallery, However you want to display that work, it is your choice. Things like plays or music, you have the right to perform that and to keep other people from performing that. And then you also, this is where it gets kind of confusing, um, you have the right to create derivative works from that work. A derivative work is simply a work that is based on something that you already 
own the copyright too. And you get to keep people from doing all of those things that I just listed. The funny thing with copyrights is that it is an exclusive right granted to you, the copyright owner, but you can have 10 different people creating almost the exact same thing and they're going to have a copyright in their own individual interpretation of that creation. For example, we'll use photography. Let's say you are at a fitness convention and Arnold Schwarzenegger, so you're at the Arnold, and Arnold is on stage doing a presentation and you and the 30,000 other people standing in the audience all take a photo of Arnold. Each individual person is going to have a copyright in that photo that they took, but not in the fact that the photo was Arnold. So you have no right in the subject matter but you have a right in the way you have expressed that with your own personal photography. So I hope that that makes sense. Basically, there isn't really a requirement that your work be something crazy and unique. Like with trademarks, you can't just trademark every word that you want to. A trademark really does need to be unique and a little bit different, which I didn't really get into what the USPTO office will accept as a trademark. So. If you have more questions on that, I would be happy to do a more in-depth video on trademark just to kind of explain to you what is considered trademark and what isn't. But that's for another day, so comment below if that's something you're interested in. But with copyrights, there really isn't a uniqueness requirement. You can all take the picture of Arnold and you all get a copyright. But let's move on to registration. Registration is going to be important for many reasons. So although you do have the common law rights as soon as you create this uh, work of art, it is better to register it similar to trademark. You're going to get more rights and it's just a much better idea to go ahead and register it. Now with copyrights, it is something that I think you can do on your own. There is a relatively simple process and I don't necessarily think you need an attorney for this. If you want to register your copyright, or when you want to register your copyright, uh, you can do it on copyright.gov website. It's a pretty low filing fee, nothing compared to trademarks. It's going to be 35, I believe, to 55, maybe more, uh, depending on the type of work that you are registering. And unlike with trademarks, if you screw something up on your application, the law is a little bit more forgiving and allows you to amend and fix those mistakes, whereas you don't get to do that with trademarks, which is why I recommend getting an attorney in that scenario. So although you do have the common law rights, as I've stated, the registration process gives you more of a remedy should somebody infringe on your copyright. You can't really sue somebody if you aren't registered. So if somebody is using your picture that you took that got 20,000 likes on Instagram, somebody else can use that and infringe on your right in that copyright, but you can't really sue them for that if it isn't registered. or if it isn't in the process of being registered. I mean, that's just huge, honestly. It's, that's, that's your number one reason why you should go ahead and register your copyrights. You can only bring a copyright infringement suit in federal court, and you can only do so if your copyright is registered. The next incentive to registering is going to be with damages. So the US Copyright Act um, states that if you register your work before it is infringed or within three months of the infringement, you get what's called statutory damages. And that, all that means is that the statute has a range of damages that a judge or a jury can award you and you don't have to show that you actually lost any money due to the infringement. The range is up to 150000 per work. If your work was pre-registered and you can show that the infringement was willful, the person who stole it knew that it belonged to you and they stole it anyway, or that they knew they weren't supposed to be using it, or basically that they should have known that they weren't supposed to be using it. Those are the kinds of things that you're going to be granted that $150,000 without having to show any actual loss on your end. So that's considered willful infringement in the United States. So if you're not registered early, the potential for you to recover is lessened by a ton, and you're only going to really be able to recover what you would have gotten if you were to license out that copyright. So the $150,000 is a lot more than probably what you would get for licensing that picture. Keep that in mind, you have up to three months after the infringement to go ahead and get that registered in order to receive the statutory damages. Registering the copyright also makes that copyright more valuable to you and your business because you can license it out. And we can get into licensing, I'll probably do another video on that entirely, but um, just know that having that copyright, owning that copyright and having it registered is going to allow you to license it out for profit. And 
obviously as a business person, that is great news, right? The last benefit to registering is going to be, it shows people that you are serious and that this is your copyright, which I stated the same thing in trademark. Registration just puts everybody on notice that it's yours and that you're asserting your rights in that copyright. So those are gonna be your main reasons as to why you should register. So now I'm just gonna quickly go through the process. I will have all of this in the description box below, so go ahead and open that up. Most likely, if you are a fitness entrepreneur, you are creating content almost all the time, and that content is all yours, and you can register pretty much everything that you're creating. Just go ahead and get it registered, the main pieces anyway. You're not gonna register every single Instagram photo you take, but the things that are important to your business, like the marketing materials, things like that, you don't want someone to be able to take that and use that for their own purposes it, to dilute your brand, you know, not give you credit for that kind of thing. Registration process, it should be pretty easy, so I'm gonna outline it for you really quickly and then that will end this video. All you do is you go online to copyright.gov and it's a computer form. You just walk through the form. There are some things in there that might be a little tricky. Some of the language might be tricky. If you mess something up, like I said earlier, the law is going to be pretty generous and they're going to allow you to fix it. With the copyright.gov website, I'm going to insert a little, insert a little screenshot. It gives you different options, so you, you wanna register something. You can also research things that are already copyrighted on there. You pick that you wanna register, and when you do that, it then gives you the options of what type of work you wanna reg register. I clicked on photographs a minute ago, and it gives you different types of photographs, and then it takes you right to, there's a little link that you can click to that says register my photograph, and it takes you right to where you need to go. To register your work, you'll just go through what you need to do. You're gonna have to create a login and all of that. And it also requires that you submit an electronic work. That's considered mandatory deposit. You're gonna have to send in that electronic work to comply with the notice for mandatory deposit. The uh, US Copyright Office they just want to have a record of everything that's copyrighted. You don't have to send in the actual thing that you're copywriting, but you do have to submit some sort of electronic work for them and for the record. Use of the copyright symbol is not required, but it is great, similar to what I told you with the trademark stuff, because it just gives people the understanding that you are asserting your rights in that copyright and that it belongs to somebody so that they can't use it. You, if you have a website or a blog post, because blog posts are copyrighted, anything along those lines, you can just throw that little copyright symbol at the bottom of your website, at the bottom of each blog post, so people know that it is copyrighted and they cannot use that material. There aren't really any rules with how you display on your work how something is copyrighted. It's just a good uh, habit to get into. So I may have gotten a little askew during this video. I hope that all made sense. I just get really excited about some of these things and I'm so passionate about the small businesses and particularly fitness businesses and really helping them grow. And these are things that people just don't know about and the only reason I know about them is because I'm an attorney. Prior to becoming an attorney, I don't think I would have known anything about intellectual property. But that is going to sum up our copyright video today. I hope you learned something new. I also hope that if you have questions or comments or concerns that you will leave them below this video. And then if you want to ask me anything more detailed specific to your situation, feel free to send me an email. That's going to be in the description box below as well, as it always is. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I haven't quite landed on the topic yet. I have about 10 things that I'm playing with. So if there's anything that you really wanna know about, feel free, let me know. I would be happy to research it and put together the information for you. I hope you guys have a great day. Go ahead and give this one a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any legal fitness videos. Thank you guys so much for watching.